and Second Life is a user-created online world, so everything in it is made and owned by the residents. And what's really cool about it is that a lot of the activity within Second Life and a lot of the things created within Second Life are actually projects around learning and for learning and learning between users. What we see is people learning what they need, so it's very much on-demand learning. They say, aha, I'm trying to solve a particular problem, so I'm going to go learn it. And then they look up and they say, hey, does anybody nearby know how to help me with this? And the odds are pretty high that somebody can. We see that kind of learning all the time. You see people hanging out with folks who have become very good at building or scripting or making clothing or running businesses or running clubs or whatever. They're learning the job, they're learning the business on the fly because they're hanging out with the people who are experts at it. So rather than sort of traditional skill and drill where you get a book, you have to learn it, and you don't know why you're learning it, in Second Life, nearly all of the learning is happening when you need it, and it's instigated by the, the residents, instigated by the person who needs the learning. It's not being forced upon them. Yeah, we've seen a lot of contradictory studies of the impact of media on kids and learning. All of the way that we consume content, we consume media, there's always learning involved. And so how do we understand what the mechanisms are so that we can start figuring out which of these work, which of them don't, so that we can have actually serious studies about the impact of what happens when you consume the, the, these forms of media. And with this series, MacArthur has a real opportunity to come through and help fund some research that may get us to some real answers.